I think the best possible future for all developers is where we use languages meant for specific problems. And so this is why I have a little bit, I, I'm confused on the whole Odin thing, right? Where does Odin fit in? Odin is definitely a language geared towards graphics, but it's also a, a, gener a general purpose language at the exact same time. And so my real question is, how do I use that language? Where do I use it properly? I'd like to talk more with Ginger Bill about the value of Odin. And is Odin really going to be something that's actually shot as a generic language? Or is it going to continue to be more of like something that's expressly used in a more kind of niche graphics way? Because obviously it's an amazing language. Him and I discussed it. It's super cool. I think it's. I think it has a lot. I, I, I think it's genuinely great language. Uh, but again, it's just so the scope tends to be very narrow. And so, which I'm perfectly fine with, by the way, I think you should use narrow scoped languages, right? I think you should use narrow scoped languages 100%. I do mean that. Um, like, I think that Zig is a very, very well scoped language. Right, Zig is not trying to be a high-level language. Zig is not giving you all the niceties of a high-level language in some sense. It's really trying to say, hey, we are a low-level language. We are a systems-level language, and we are doing system levels like stuff. This is what you should use us for. And we are convenient, and we have all the niceties of modern stuff, but we are intentionally being very narrow. And it feels delicious, right? That's why I think Rust is going to have such a bad rap is because it doesn't have like that as part of its mission, right? Rust, there's not really like a, there's not really like this is what Rust really should be used for and people just understand it. Instead, people just use Rust for everything and then they get burnt by it and you see a lot of people that get really kind of like uh, emotionally bruised by it and then they hate it. And so it's like, that's not good because Rust is really great for certain activities. I think Rust is fantastic for certain activities. And you're absolutely also right. Haskell is actually useless. Like, that's why you shouldn't, like, I don't think you get a W at all by taking Golang, turning it into Wasm, and running it on the client. Like, I don't think that's a W. I do not think that's a W, and I do not think you should do that. I think you're just asking yourself for a bunch of pain. How would that be a W? People do that kind of stuff. Well, that, I mean, isn't that WebAssembly? Like, did I not just actually describe WebAssembly tech savvy, Travi? That means I also just caught a stray to Rust doing the exact same thing, to any language doing the exact same thing, right? I just, I'm not convinced yet that it's it's fantastic. Wasm is a W. I'm not sure if Wasm's is a W yet. Like, I understand there's niche cases where it's just like we've built, we've built this amazing graphic program and now we need to shove it into the uh, into the browser. Let's go. But Wasm is also like really difficult to debug. Wasm is not great for actually using, right? Like if you were to build an application from the ground up using Wasm as like your single source of doing it, I think it's like, that's tough. But if you were to use something else, right, whatever graphics program you're developing, all that, you develop it, it's fantastic. Then you transport it and put it into WebAssembly. I think that that is fantastic. Then that seems to be really grand. It's just the other way just seems really painful. Like, I don't know why. Ugh, you know what I mean? Wasm's an output target. I get that. And then there's also, like, Wasm for the back end, which I know Wasm is, is almost in some sense taking over Docker. And that's kind of really interesting. I don't know if for those that are kind of following it, but like uh, Fermion effectively is that you're you're using you're using Wasm instead of Docker, which is actually a really 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 interesting idea. Wasm can be really nice for the back end. Yeah, it wasn't aware of that. Well, think about it for a second. If you have a proper environment that can run all of your basic operations, you could really have any language be compiled into Wasm, and then it just runs right. You can kind of now start to think of your your entire system you know, wasm aware of that. You know what I mean? It's like, it's pretty cool. Like I actually am, I could buy that as a cool kind of target. You do kind of lose some of the performance of why, what, like, why are you using Rust if you're going to run it in wasm, right? So I understand like the counter arguments, just like, yeah, I took the whole, I did all this time to just power out this really amazing application. Now we're running it in wasm, which is not as good as if I just would have built it in the first place, you know? But it also makes things like, uh, what's it called? There's a lot of serverless potentials. With them wasms, wasm is just really, really interesting. I, I don't know where to go with that one yet. I'm very curious on seeing where that uh, where the, where that ends. Um, Docker's gross. Spawn the old tail works on my machine. I mean, 
Docker isn't that gross. You, I mean, you. I hate to shit on Docker. Can I? Can I? Can I just? Can, can I get a second? Hey, can I get a second? Hey, can 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 a man get a second? I I hate to shit on Docker because I also was developing before Docker or anything like that, and that shit also sucked. Okay, and so no docking to Docker was pretty neat. Okay, like that's pretty cool. The fact that I can just spot up a Docker image, toss that crap on Fly.io, and it's just like, Rah! like that's pretty cool. I'm pretty, ha- I am pretty happy about that. Right? Containerization is pretty neat. But people that build your development environment around containerization first, that, I, I hate it. Okay? I hate it. Like, there is nothing worse than when people try to make it like like your development environment should be through a Docker container. It's just like, no, you're a horrible person. And what you've done is the spawn of Satan, and I'm absolutely angry at it, okay? Don't do that, okay? Don't do that. It is just the worst thing in the universe. <laughs> Containerization just encourages poor environment setup practices, in my opinion. Yeah, but, but, that, that, I mean, but that's also unfair. Uh, I mean, it's, it's unfair in the sense that you can also make a great one, right? Have you seen the average person's setup to begin with? It also allows for the possibility that someone can have a container that they pull that has a good setup. I love the idea of dev dockers, but in practice, yeah, it's, 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 not, it's not real. I wouldn't use it. It sucks. It sucks. I'm of the opinion that I think languages in niche uses are amazing. I really like JavaScript. I think JavaScript's a pretty good language for front ends. I actually do think Lua is fundamentally better. For, for building front ends, uh, just because it's simpler, you can't do as much, and you realize like you don't you don't need to bring a cannon to hunt fodder, you know, or to hunt rabbits, you know what I mean? And so I think there's something really awesome about Lua. Lua better for building front ends, absolutely. I think if you if you don't if you haven't used Lua enough, and you haven't built a front end yourself, then I think that you're kind of you're wrong. You, you just don't know, right? You're like that one guy that said HTMX is all these things, but it, it was clear you've never used it. I think, I think Lua would have been the better choice because um, it keeps things really, really straightforward, really, really simple, and it's really easy to build a nice UI set of items inside of it. Lua is the best thing ever. Yeah, it's, it's, very, it's very, very wonderful. People that haven't used Lua had just have no idea how nice it really is. And once you use that versus JavaScript, it's hard to describe. Uh, Lua's biggest downfall is honestly one-based indexing, which just makes everything hard. Like whenever I have to do one-based indexing, I, I really have to struggle. Like I have to like, uh, you know, but that's the thing is it's so rare you do indexing. So often that's not like the thing you're thinking about, especially in, uh, oh, it's, you're absolutely right. It's skill issues. Absolutely. Uh, one-based indexing is what makes it fun. <laughs> we might define we we might define fun a slightly different here. Um, but one-based indexing is really just difficult because my brain can't, you know, my brain can't quite like do it right every single time. And anytime I do that, I have to like I have to write a test whenever I'm doing that, right? And whenever I'm trying to write some complex piece of code that involves actual manual iteration that I can't just like give me the iterator, like write I pairs, just give me the iterator. I can't do that. So that is a, it's like its own difficult, you know, thing. Just confirm TDD. Well, that feels a little offensive. Okay. Coming out here, coming out here, swinging like that. I think we need to be banned. Um, I love TDD. Oh my goodness. Okay. We're not doing this. We're not doing this today. Either way, I really think it was a true miss in the front end world having JavaScript versus Lua. And I think there's a lot of people that have never used Lua longer than three hours, but they have really strong opinions about Lua. I would say that until you've used Lua for like 100 hours, it's really hard to know how good it actually is as a language. There you go. That's my take. Is Lua greater than Python? I haven't used Python enough to have a really solid opinion about Python. I've only used Python like maybe a, maybe 100 hours over the last 10 years, right? So it's like I never use it enough to be like great at Python. But I already have like two loosey-goosey languages in my head. Do I really want a yet another loose-goose language in my head?
do I need to get three out of four of the big prominent loosey goosey languages? I don't know. JS ecosystem is the real culprit. I don't think so. I think the expressiveness, I think the expressiveness of JavaScript is its own problem. I think it causes what are loosey goosey languages? Uh, JavaScript, Python, Lua, Ruby. I'm sure there's other one. Elixir may also fall into this category, but it's just different. Is Gleam a loose is is Gleam a loose gooser? Lua is very very concise. Strongly typed loosey goosey does not equal JS slash PHP loosey goosey. This is true. This is true. Very very different. I thought Gleam had types to it. Yeah, I, I thought Gleam had types to it. I was very confused by that statement. Gleam ha has OCaml like types. Okay, yeah, that's what I thought. Yeah, your mom's loosey goose. Okay, calm down, calm down, calm down. Gleam is not loose. All right. Anyways, just some thoughts on languages and things. When you know what you're doing, JS is awesome. That's no, 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 no. You can't say that. Every language is great when you know what you're doing. Okay, that's not a statement. That's not, that's, that's water's wet. I get it. You can only, you cannot compare a language into itself. Any language you get good at, you will find awesome and easy to use. Any language, okay? People build roller coasters in Excel, okay? Again, you can do it. You got to compare and contrast them based off experience, okay? I've built a lot of UIs with JavaScript. That's probably my most used language in the world is JavaScript. And I built a lot of UIs in Vim, which contain a lot of the exact same problems as building UIs. And then you have to use Lua. And I just find it way simpler. I find that I can go way faster. And guess what? The APIs in Vim probably aren't even as good as the APIs in the browser. You know, they're just not, uh, you know, is, there you go. And so it's just very interesting comparing them to each other. Vim APIs are funny. They're kind of funny. You know what I mean? How would you rate yourself uh, designing UIs? Uh, I'll give myself a 69. If water is wet and I'm 70% water, am I 70% wet? Yes. Do you think JavaScript is better to learn than TypeScript even for today's employment? Uh, I would learn TypeScript because people seem to be really horned up about it. Uh, but I would use JS Doc in practice with TypeScript types. That's what I like. I've been a big fan of that development. Oh, man. So good. CLI tools with no build step. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. It's so good. Dude, it's just so good. No dist folder, no TS node, none of that garbage. Oh, my goodness. It is so good. Y'all, yeah, it's so good. It makes, it makes the type so nice.